Hello everyone and welcome back to Factorio. Got a bit of a lag spike there. Should be fine in the recording though. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, um... So I just want to show you a quick update. I'll keep these videos a bit briefer, at least for the moment. Um, while I'm not actually building stuff on camera, I'll just do a quick update showing you basically what I've done. And the the main issue I had was I want to be able to start actual construction of actual factory stuff as soon as possible. And in order to be able to do that, I need um, just a functioning train system. It doesn't need to be the full thing yet. It doesn't need to have the full throughput yet. But I need to be providing copper and iron plates and steel and all the stuff I need, basically. And um, the first thing in the way of that is I need trains to have fuel. And I didn't want some sort of temporary fuel solution that uh, I would just have to destroy and replace later on. I wanted to have the um, yeah, the full-blown endgame fueling solution right from the get-go so if you look at the train network this is the iron smelting um, connected the stacker I've shown you that last time I've connected one new train up here this is just connected to this one patch of oil um, it's all being loaded into this um, into this train station it's filling up very very fast right now um, it has no trouble at all being at least almost full. I have not checked if it's completely full, but yeah, actually we're, we're fine here. Um, this fills up completely by the time the train gets back. So right now the train will always be filled pretty much instantly. It takes, what, seven seconds, five seconds to fill the train from zero to full with this setup. Um, I recommend anyone who's using fuel trains to transport their fluids, um, fluid wagons to transport their fluids, not fuel trains, um, to use a setup similar to this, where each pump is connected directly to an individual tank. Because the connection from pump to wagon and from tank to pump, they're very fast. But if you put pipes in between, those really bottleneck the the speed at which you can um, you can fill the trains. So the way I've got it set up here is I've got three pumps per wagon and each of them has an individual tank. So that way I, a train just gets filled in an instant basically. It's very very fast. Um, how are you doing? You're almost empty. We can actually see it in, in just a moment. Uh, can I get there in time? Yeah we're good. Okay. It's, uh, we'll just wait for this to empty. And then the next thing I did, I also built a water supply station. Um, this doesn't have a stacker. It right now only has one train. I might need two or three trains maybe supplying water at some point. But then I can just use the long line um, from basically from here all the way up here as a stacker just have it uh, in sequence rather than parallel but um, that's just fine um, I don't expect I'll be needing many water trains but yeah I could just do it that way okay and we're driving because the train is now empty enough um, you might notice these tanks aren't quite empty they have a tiny amount left basically the way I've set up the train condition it leaves when the crude oil is at zero but the game rounds down, so the, the 0 0.8 that are currently in it, it counts as 0. And now, let's check. Right. 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, 6 seconds, 7. There you go. Uh, it is insanely fast how how quickly these, um, these pumps can load these wagons using a setup similar to mine. But yeah, I also need water for the um, oil processing. So I have um, also added a water supply train. And um, I might eventually need multiple oil trains if the oil patch up there gets depleted and this train will take too long, basically. 
So I've put a stacker here for the crude oil trains. I can have up to eight, I think, plus one in the station. So up to nine trains going to the station, which should be just fine. Um, I could probably make this long line for the water train into a stacker as well. So I could have two or three water trains, but there's really no need. Um, the water train will, will never run dry. It will never um, be a bottleneck because water is an infinite resource, whereas the oil will slow down over time. And yeah. Anyway, um, I'm not quite sure about this, this pumping setup. It's all a bit hacked together. Um, it doesn't work flawlessly, as you can see. It's, um, it's not draining the train equally. I'm not quite sure where I'm going wrong, though. Um, or rather, I, I do kind of know what's what the issue is. It's taking from this tank first and then from the others. Um, I might just need more pipes going up to the refineries for a higher throughput. Not that it matters because right now it's backed up because I, um, I just, I'm currently not producing anything. I'm not using the rocket fuel at all, so it, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, you can see um, that this is working quite nicely. I'm pumping up the crude oil up here. I'm actually using two lines, one taken from the center of the station and one from the side here, pumping these up here and pumping the water from the other station and supplying it all to the refineries. Each of those are in range of um, 10 beacons, so they have a very nice crafting speed. They are very swift and production modules, obviously, for additional output. Um, this one's not even backed up. Wow. Well, we're mostly backed up, put it that way. Um, the heavy oil gets cracked into light oil. Now the entire purpose of this machine is to make, of this factory section, is to make um, rocket fuel. And you make rocket fuel from solid fuel, and I could turn the heavy oil into solid fuel directly. But by cracking it first, it's almost one heavy oil turns into one light oil. Not quite, but I think 40 heavy oil turn into 39 light oil because of the productivity bonus. And um, light oil is much more efficient to turn to solid fuel. It's 10 light oil per solid fuel, but 20 heavy oil and also 20 petroleum gas. So it makes sense to crack the, the heavy oil first, which um, yeah, four, four factories are enough. Assuming these refineries all run at full pelt, which is currently not the case because my, um, my crude oil supply is not fast enough um, but assuming it is the case which I can fix by fixing the station design I'll have just have to think about how to do that properly um, then four heavy heavy oil to light oil crackers are enough to keep up with my heavy oil supply and then I need 84 machines making solid fuel from the light oil which is what I have here the first four columns of chemical chemical um, factories are all chemical plants rather they're all making solid fuel from light oil and as you can see my provider chests are already filled up largely so yeah I, I've already backed the system up it's only been running for and I finished it at about one at about 9 p.m. it's now 11 but I took a big break it's maybe been running for an hour or so and it's fully backed up. Um, it, it works really, really nicely. And then the, the final two columns are for making solid fuel from petrol petroleum gas. And again, fully beaconed, meaning um, eight beacons per um, chemical plant. It's just because they're smaller. You can't fit more beacons if you want to have a nice row based pattern like this. And then again, productivity modules in the machines for increased output. And then down below, I have my uh, assembling machines. These are, how many are they in total? I can tell you, uh, 176. I think 169 is the number I needed. So I have 
seven more than I need and it came out to a sort of nice symmetrical-ish pattern. Um, I'm using almost the same design as I used for the iron furnace. I have requested chassis in the center, requesting the raw materials, the solid fuel in this case, being produced here, fully beaconed assembling machine threes. So they have a crafting speed of 5.5 while having a productivity of 40%. And then they're all outputting into these passive provider chests. Um, now the only thing that's missing is a station down here, which will basically have uh, trains supplying the rest of the base with fuel. So there will be one train maybe down here, which will just be having a very short drive to here-ish. Um, so it'll, it'll literally start here, go around here and supply the, um, the iron station with fuel. I think it might already have I've already supplied a tiny bit because I had some left over in my inventory from building that fuel station. So I think one of these trains, this one here, has two and there's four and there's another four. So I have a tiny amount of fuel already in this uh, station, but obviously it needs to be much, much more. I've also put 2,000 logistics robots in here. Logistics robots in here. Um, 2,000 will not be enough. It'll probably be needing 5,000, 10,000 a ton but um, yeah I just had them left over because as it turned out this system when running at full uh, full capacity it needed about 1100 um, so I, I, I could just kept putting more logistics robots in it into it until it stopped using all of them while it was running at full pelt so 1150 um, was about the number might get away with 50 less or might possibly need 50 more for very high demand um, times but we should be okay now i originally designed this thing to only provide rocket fuel for my trains but in my calculations i basically when i calculated just the ratios and all that for this station which um, it has the entirely correct ratios it has the exact number of machines i need for everything um, but when I calculate the ratios, I did all my calculations per second. Um, it sort of comes more natural to me to to work in seconds. But um, obviously, if you look at how much is produced and required per second, you get smaller numbers than if you look at per minute. Um, and so I thought, yeah, this this whole thing is not going to be enough. Just I, I didn't do any sort of thinking beyond that i just saw a number of i don't know 24 or whatever it was and i thought okay yeah that's not going to be enough to supply anything but the the trains really but as it turns out that's per second so per minute this thing can produce i think over 2000 rocket fuel um and it might well be that that's enough to supply both my trains and my actual rocket launching station um Certainly considering the size of this, it should be. Um, I could probably scale this down to half and still be fine. Really, it just came out at this number because I have 20 refineries up there. Which is about enough to um, to handle the full train load. I think I might need a few more, but I haven't completely calculated that. But yeah, in order to, to keep up with the 20 refineries, this is just how much, uh, how many rocket fuel machines I need, um, which is probably overkill. It's also eating my energy like crazy, I, as you can see. Um, we're still fine during the daytime, especially now because it's not running, so it's not consuming much power. But I have currently got 2,400 beacons active and uh, draining power, and those eat a ton. Um, and that's sort of my choice, I guess. I've I've hooked up all of this iron smelting, even though there's no iron ore coming in. So the actual furnaces barely cost power. They've got a tiny little drain, as you can see, six kilowatts. Um, they would obviously drain a lot more if they were actually doing something right now. But the beacons, 
they just consume 480 kilowatts at all times. It's as you can see, their energy consumption is the same as their drain. Um, it doesn't matter if they're actually providing their bonus to anything that uses it. They just drain that much power. So all of those beacons that are doing nothing at all are still eating power. Um, my plan is to just plop down more solar panels, basically. Um, I have a little factory. Uh, it's probably not in radar range, right? Uh, oh, it is. I've got a dedicated uh, patch of copper and iron. These are purely to make um, make solar, solar panels. And also I put the leftover steel to the rest of my factory, but yeah. I've got a chest here, 2400 in it. Um, same with accumulators, I'm producing those in my old base. Um, every now and then I'll just plop down a few thousand solar panels and we should be fine in the long run. Um, yeah, I'm currently expanding this array right here. Okay, so aside from that, nothing really new has happened. Um, this is working fine for now. Um, actually, it's working completely fine. I'm really happy with it. Um, there's some sort of weird stuff going on that's just mostly interesting. Um, I'll just talk some talk about random stuff for the rest of the episode, so feel free to tune out and leave if you're not interested. But um, some some interesting stuff is going on. So pumping the light oil down here using a ton of pumps because I want to keep the um, throughput high. And using pumps a lot just helps with throughput. And I could expect irregularities in the first section right here because that's where the chemical plants supply the cracked heavy oil and infuse the line with more light oil basically. So I could sort of expect irregularities here but as it turns out the first two machines for the longest time did not produce anything. Their chests as you can see aren't full yet even though ones further down the line are full. So there's, I'm not quite sure how the fluid mechanics with the pumps really end up working, but even though you would expect the machines up here to actually have a surplus or a a lot of supply because I am uh, adding the, the light oil from the cracking here, the first two machines for the longest time did nothing. And I think it's because the oil that came in was pumped out by this pump quicker than it was absorbed by the machine. So this machine was basically empty. It just did nothing. Um, as you can see, products finished in about 2,000 products finished. Whereas if we look one look at ones further down the line, they have 6,500. And these are all fairly similar, except for right down the bottom where they um, where they drop down a lot. But this one's also weird. So here we have 6,530. Look at the if you look at the um, details of the machine at the very bottom. There's products finished. So this one has done six and a half thousand. This one has randomly done not even 2,000. And the next one's at six and a half again. Um, and I have no idea why. It's From here on out, the, the layout is identical. I copy-pasted it. It's a pump, a pipe segment, pump, pipe, se pipe, uh, pipe segment. Wow. And I have no idea why these machines differ so much. I could sort of see why it would get less as you, as you go down, for example, because the oil gets used up. Or if the pumps are better or faster at absorbing the um, the oil than the machines actually are, I would expect the ones at the bottom to have produced the most. But it's it's just it's really weird. Um, if any of you know why this is happening, please let me know. Um, I think it's only in that first line. The other lines are fairly consistent. So um, let me check. Wasn't there another one? 6,000, then a bunch of 2,000s. Yeah, this one's also being very weird. Again, if there's a design flaw, I would expect it to be a sort of systematic error. Okay, th this one's fine again, but for some reason this one isn't. But they're identical, I copy-pasted them. They are literally identical. I, did, I didn't place these manually, it's just, it's really strange. Do I fear? Okay, and these are mostly equal. The ones at the bottom have a bit more probably because, again, the pumps are faster than the machines. And here's also 6,000, then 4,000, 2,000, 2,000, 6,000 again. Um, yeah, let me know if you have any idea why that is happening. 
Um, but yeah, aside from, from that, which is just a bit strange, doesn't, doesn't really seem to be an issue. Um, I'm not backing up, so I, I suspect... Um, I, I don't know what's causing the issue, but um, it's not actually limiting my throughput. What's limiting my throughput is the fact that I'm not pumping out the oil from these containers um, equally, which I suspect I can fix, but it would be a bit of a hassle. Um, I mean, I have 18, um, 18 output pumps here. That's the, the this row here of, um, of vertically aligned pumps. And I could just have each of these in an individual pipe going up somewhere here and sort of try to put them down in equal uh, distances into the supply line. Um, I'll, I'll find a way to solve that issue. And it's not a big issue anyway. Uh, my, my throughput is just fine even without that um, without that working perfectly. And yeah, these are now the first trains that are fully supplied by my rocket fuel. And the advantage is that once I've got my supply system set up, so basically the train's going here, um, there will be one train on the side going here, and if maybe two or three trains on the side supplying my other stations, here, here, there will be a massive oil processing station, probably about the same size as this, probably a bit bigger, and in between there'll be a huge copper processing station as well. And um, these will just be supplied by train from here. And then in the center, there will be train stops for longer trains, um, supplying the rest of the base with fuel and possibly even supplying my rocket launch station, which I have no idea where I'll put it. Um, probably a cool place. Um, I was actually thinking that my rocket launching, I might do it in the center of this lake. So just build a landfill bridge up here and then launch my rockets right here. That might look really cool. I'll, I'll think about that. Uh, saving map, autosave, okay. Uh, episode's getting a bit long again, I'm just rambling, but yeah. Um, until I've got my, my basics sorted out, I'll just do updates like these, showing you what I've done, rather than building this on camera. Um, I, I'm streaming this, I'm live streaming this on occasion. So, yeah, it's on Twitch, strange German guy is my Twitch username. I'll link to it if I remember. It might also be in my channel description if I remember. Um, uh, yeah, I, I stream the boring bits basically and then I make a quick video updating you on the progress. Okay, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.